Hi, I'm Gary Wheeler, CEO of ASID. Today, I'm going to introduce a subject that's very important to many of us who have owned our own businesses. We're going to discuss small business practices and what you need to do to be successful and move your practice forward. We have two great people, Carolyn and Chandra, who will take this to you and discuss their background, where they've come from, and how they have succeeded. So I'm going to turn it over to Chandra and Carolyn. Take it away. Hi, I'm Chandra with Chandra Harris Interiors, and I am the past um, chair of the chapter support team. Hi, I'm Carolyn Ames Noble of Ames Design Collective, and I'm the chair of ASID National Board. We're here today to talk about small business. Yeah, two small business owners. So tell me what you do in your business. Sure, I'd be happy to. So my career, and I think I've shared a little bit of this with you along the way, yes. but it's really, while I started my journey as an interior designer, I worked in product and product design development for mm -hmm. a long time and many years. Mm -hmm. And that really stuck when I went out on my own. Mm -hmm. And so it is a mix. It's a blend of interior design and product design development, mm -hmm. specifically with color, material, finish, and all the while, the lens really is focused on human health mm -hmm. and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, so me too. So this is second career for me though. I was an engineer before I went into design. And so when I went into design, I was um, challenged with um, healthy interiors right in school when I had to roll um, in a wheelchair in our um, building that our school resided in. So that kind of changed my focus as a designer. It came less about pretty than it did being very functional and about healthy interiors. And so um, that's what we do. So we elevate as much as we can live, work and play spaces. And we've been doing that for about um, 15 years now. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I've been at it about five years. So you're wow. certainly yeah, <laughs> on my own. So, yes. Uh, so it's certainly that's wonderful that you are practicing and successful business owner after 15 years? It's become successful, right? So we go through that transition of, of learning and because we're small business and wearing all the different hats and, you know, going through the day being the janitor, but being the designer and, be, you know, being the bookkeeper. And so, um, yeah, but we've learned along the way to let go of the things that we should not be doing as um, business owners and, and really focusing on um, what my what my design uh, brand is, and that's to elevate people's lives. So thinking about that, that you're elevating lives, and thank you for the sharing the experience of feeling what it might be like to be in a wheelchair right. and to feel where your clients' experience is. If you could go back in time 15 years ago, mm -hmm. What what would you what would you tell yourself? What did you want to know? What what have you learned now that you wish you might have known when you were starting out? So interesting um, that partnerships are important, even though you're a small business. Quality of life for the small business owner is important too. I think we dive in head first and we are there to complete all the tasks. And so just dialing back a little bit and getting those partnerships um, in place and really thinking about my business. As a business, I think uh, for a long time it was a hobby, right? And that hobby turned into this working unit that became a financial entity for me. And so I had to restructure my thinking as a business owner. So I say now I'm not just an interior designer. I own an interior design firm. And so that makes the difference for me and how I practice and, you know, literally what I have to, um, have to, have to do on a daily basis. What about you? Um, we have a lot of threads that are really common there. So when I started my practice, I fully admit I had left um, a corporate job and I had been there for many years and I loved my job. And I, mm -hmm. I, I this was a stopgap, frankly. Right. I figured mm -hmm. I would take on a few consulting opportunities and go from there mm -hmm. and, you know, started to realize the flexibility, the ability to sort of insert yourself in this creative way that felt so freeing. Mm -hmm. I realized this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But along the, the way, it was it was pretty clunky. Yeah. You know, you talk about partnerships, even things like strategy. Strategy is so important to my sure. business, but I realized I wasn't even using strategy sure. for the business. Mm -hmm. It was really, again, common threads. 
realizing I'm not just a designer anymore. I am a design business owner. Exactly. Um, enrolling our company in the women owned business enterprise mm -hmm. was really important. It was a, it's another great network and resource exactly. that I have found to be really helpful to learn more about business. Um, and all the while, it's it's just so helpful when you can bring in and thread in other experts. That's right. That you've tried to do everything, but somebody else is just really good exactly. at this. Exactly. Yes. yes. And you can you can get back to doing your work, That's the work exactly that you love right. to do. Right. Isolation that we should not operate in isolation. You know, we need a team around us, and that team is not necessarily someone that's sitting right next to us. You know, those are those those partnerships that you create that do their part well, and then that allows me and frees me up to do my part well. That's really pertinent. Yeah, it is. It is. Tell so, me about some of your partners. So um, when I say partners, I mean the aspect of the business because we're talking about small business, right? Not, not necessarily the interior design, but some of my partners are my accountants, my mm -hmm. legal team, you know, um, of course, my manufacturers and my vendors. All of those are very crucial pieces to my contractors, the people that are working with me to implement my ideas, right? So all of those are very critical pieces. I am no better or no good without those those people. I mean, I can come up with the best design ever if I can't implement it properly and have a good ROI for my company and be able to pay people, then, you know, that leaves me at a deficit. So it was important to me to realize that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was learning, though. It was learning that did not come by, you know, like right off the bat. It was it was like, oh, this is what you need because you're driving yourself crazy kind of thing, right? Yeah. So you need sleep and you need a partner that can be doing some of this while you're sleeping, you know, and resting yourself. So my well-being was as just as important as my, giving that same kind of consideration to my clients. So, yeah, I had to do a lot of overhaul and thinking about running an um, interior design business. So what are some of the tools and resources that you use in your business? Well, I have to say some of the tools and resources in my business start with my professional membership with ASID. Mm -hmm. I was a member all the way back when I was a student. I've been a member as an industry partner, I allied professional. And to me, I think everyone has a different experience with sure. ASID. But my mm -hmm. experience has been all about connections, mm -hmm. whether it's connection to education whether it's connection to other individuals, whether it's connections to research, that has been very foundational for my business. Mm -hmm. um, it's same for me. Um, ASID has been my number one resource, I have to say. Um, I too was a student um, um, member and that transitioned into an allied member, which transitioned into a professional member, right? And having, you know, mentors within the organizations um, that has literally pushed me, you know, out there, you need to go down this path. And why don't you consider that path? And things that I was not thinking about because I was in my small business grind, you know? Yeah. So um, that's been very helpful for me. And I think that's a significant concept, right? So what it you have to plug in where your business is and understand that. And I think that when we are small businesses, we, we go out and we're trying to seek this information and it works for one business, but not necessarily the other, because all of our business models, you know, could be different and of course have uh, varying elements to them. So um, I think it's important to find that fit for your business. And, and it's trial and error. You know, I can't tell error. you how much money I spent on software tools <laughs> until I got the right ones. But, you know, you continue that process until you, until you figure it out. And then you're like doing the hallelujah dance <laughs> when you figured it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Any of those moments? <laughs> oh, they're, they're, the hallelujah dance is definitely, that's the best. That's the best like, this is working. I don't have to spend time on this, you know, element anymore. So that's really good. Yeah, I have to say the hallelujah dance may have been when we hired our, our bookkeeper. And she is just yes. amazing executive assistant yes. and so fast yes. at things that would take me hours. Great point. And it's done and it's efficient. And so along with the resources, I still feel people are the most 
significant Agreed. resources that we have Agreed. for a small business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Agree. Same for me. I mean, I have a great executive assistant and so she keeps me on my toes. Um, she knows where I need to go before <laughs> I do. And so again, that efficiency of I mean, we are creative and, and I consider that I'm, I'm a creative. I'm not necessarily a, you know, business or in the grind of the business elements. Right. So it's it's nice to have those people align those resources that can do that piece for you. It really is. And it comes to trust. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, for me, even thinking about this conversation, mm -hmm. I was I was thinking about it. I'm like, what is it that I'm so passionate about my work? Yes. And. To a fault, sometimes I realized I wasn't delegating or I had to just have that final look at something, which I admit I still like to have that final <laughs> look at something. But maybe it's just a look now mm -hmm. instead of necessarily getting mm -hmm. into the weeds on everything, because mm -hmm. as passionate as we are, it can also be stifling in a way. And so, yes. sort of editing that for myself has been it's growth. It's continued growth. I have to admit, mm -hmm. I'm still working at it. Mm -hmm. I think that's why some of the small group meetings that we go to in ASID has helped my business and helped my perspective, you know, on business. When I see bigger firms doing X, Y, Z, you know, we adopt some of those principles. And I think it's really helped me to kind of matriculate some of the things that you're just talking about. So it helps out in, in a major, major way. It does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the consideration of literally being stuck in the weeds and having to have the global view and not being in the trees sometimes is, is where we need to be as business owners, right? As small business owners. It really is. Mm -hmm. Shundra, you brought up something that when we were talking about starting our business, it's getting together in small groups. Mm -hmm. For me, some of the most formulative conversations were those frank and honest conversations on mm -hmm. fee on RFP, on yes. going to market, on branding. And we're excited. I know you've been working and I've been part of the group working on a small business platform yes. where we really support our members both locally and nationally as they too start, form, emerge and create and build on mm -hmm. their small businesses. I think it's going to be a great um, platform because, as you know, we have so many small businesses um, in ASID. I mean, it's it's the foundation of our membership. And so I, I can tell you right now, I use the contracts that ASID wrote. Um, I literally pull them into my contracts. And so it has worked out, has been very efficient for me to share those with my clients in their very prescriptive and they're very clear and clean and concise. And so that's worked. So more information and more support and tools and resources um, that ASID is developing is amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. And hearing that there'll be a 401k plan yes. that we can all contribute insurance. to. Insurance. <laughs> yeah, because those are really right. Right. hefty expenses. Mm -hmm. when, they are. But when the aggregate is comes together and our members come together, Absolutely. it's just so much more powerful. And we just remember there's strength in numbers. Strength so. in numbers. <laughs> if we can, you know, utilize them as a collective, then there we go. That's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really well, enjoyed talking I, with you today, you know, Chandra. I met you on the on Zoom call <laughs> <laughs> as chair of CST, and you were coming in to hear our plights and hear the conversations, and you were so um, thoughtful to do so. And and you know the conversations and the elements that you would talk about um, as far as from a national standpoint have been really great. And so, thank you for sharing this time with me. Oh, you're welcome. It's truly been my pleasure. And to your point, it's so nice to meet you in person. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> thank you as well. And we want to thank you guys for um, listening. And we hope we've said something that could benefit you. And so thank you so much.